Today in Precal, we talked about increasing and decreasing functions, as well as maximum and minimums on functions. We started with some definitions. If there's a positive change in x when moving to the right, that is to be said to be increasing. If there is a negative change in x when moving to the right, that is decreasing. If there is zero change, that's constant. And then the one new word we learned today was monotonic. And monotonic means something is always increasing or always decreasing. So these things are what would happen if only increasing is happening, it's monotonic. If only decreasing is happening, it's monotonic. We looked at a couple of examples in class. We started with x to the third power. We plugged that in our calculator, and you should remember that that is what the function looks like. We talked about if I use my domain and I come in from negative infinity, I'm going from negative infinity to positive infinity, right here my function is always increasing. So it is increasing on the interval negative infinity to infinity. And that's all there is to that one. Because it's always increasing, it is also monotonic. So it's monotonic and increasing from negative infinity to positive infinity. Next we talked about the function x to the third minus 3x. And we graphed that in our calculator and then transferred that over here to our paper. I'm just going to skip over that step. I know that you can plug things in your calculator. If you can't, you can come to tutorials and we can look at that. But this is what this one looked like. And then we talked about moving again from left to right. I'm coming in from the negative direction. And as I'm coming in, it's increasing. So it's increasing from negative infinity. And it stops increasing right here. And that is at negative 1. Notice I'm using the x value, and I don't care that the y value is 2. I'm only using the x value when talking about increasing or decreasing. Then, at negative 1, it begins to de decrease or fall. So it's falling here, decreasing, from negative 1 all the way until right here, which is 1. Again, only looking at the x value. At 1, it changes direction again and begins to increase. So again, it's increasing from 1 to infinity. This one is not monotonic because it is both increasing and decreasing. Notice right here that even though this arrow is going down, this is increasing because I'm moving from left to right. This is increasing. Watch out for that. That can be a little bit tricky. Number three, we looked at a piecewise function. We learned how to graph those last week, but I've already graphed it for you here. Let's talk about where it's increasing, decreasing, and constant in this case. It is increasing as we begin from negative infinity all the way to zero. Remember, I'm using the x value. Then at 0, it's straight, so it's constant from 0 all the way to 2. At 2, it begins to decrease, and 2, it is decreasing all the way to infinity because it's going down as x moves across from left to right. On the flip side, we talked about extrema. Extrema have two different types. They have a relative, which is also called a local extrema, and they have a global which is also called an absolute max or min. So we have the relative maximum and minimum. We're going to do that on this little graph over here to the side that I've sketched for you. And then we have the absolute. When we talked about this in class, I mentioned to the students that you may have a local restaurant that's your favorite. Let's say your favorite local restaurant is Nikki's. But your absolute favorite might be Babe's. It might be your favorite restaurant anywhere, but it's not local. That makes it not relative. So looking at this, we're looking at the relative max and min first. That just means the highest point in the area or the lowest point in the area. Starting with A, that's the lowest point around it. So that would be a minimum. B would be a maximum. It's the highest point around the other pieces of this graph. And then it tends to kind of alternate in this case. It doesn't always work this way, but it does here. So then C would be a minimum, D would be a maximum, E would be a minimum, F would be a maximum, and G would be a minimum. I said G and wrote F. Okay, then we talk about the absolute maximum and minimum. That's the absolutely highest point and the absolutely lowest point on the graph. So where's the absolutely highest? Well, that's here at B. And the absolute lowest is C. And that's all there is to max and min. Next, we plug this into our calculator. 
and we looked for the absolute maximum and minimum. To plug that in, we're going to go to our y equals, and I've got the steps written right here for you if you get stuck. We're going to go to y equals and type in what we have, 3x squared minus 4x minus 2, and graph. And as you can see, this one is going down. It has a minimum. We want to know where is that minimum, so we're going to do second trace minimum. We're going to pick a point on the left side of the minimum where the clicker is clicking on the left and hit enter. We're going to move that to the right side of the minimum and hit enter again. doesn't matter where on the right or where on the left as long as it is on each. Your calculator even gives you hints down here of what to do. Now we're going to guess, so we hit enter one more time, and that gives us our answer. Our minimum is at .66666, which is just two-thirds and negative 3.33333, or negative 3 and 1 third. If it's a common fraction, like a third, a fourth, a half, I want you to go ahead and translate it back over to a fraction. If it's a decimal that's not so comfortable for you, you can leave it as a decimal. The last example we looked at was negative 4x squared minus 7x plus 3. We plug that into our calculator, and then we graph it. You'll notice on this one that it's a maximum. There's a highest point there. It's getting kind of a glare, so I apologize. I'll move, when I move the calculator, that should help. Second trace. This time we're going to do a maximum. We still want to go on the left side of our maximum and hit enter. Now on the right and hit enter. Enter one more time, and our answer here is negative .875 and 6.063. Well, we do want to round to three decimal places here if we are going to stick with fractions. That's it for today's lesson. Your assignment was A6. It's out of the book. That's page 62 and 63, numbers 31 to 37, and 49 to 52. Good luck, and let me know if you have questions.